Well, hello there, and welcome to episode 68 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma. I am your host of this knitting podcast. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma Knits. And I'm coming to you from Ottawa in late August. Summer is, I have to say, starting to feel like it's winding down a teeny weeny bit. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a nip in the air at night, especially that wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. But here we are at the end of August and um, welcome. Welcome to this podcast. Welcome to this episode. Thank you for coming back again. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for all the likes and the lovely, lovely comments. I enjoy them so much. Those comments, especially, I must say. And um, yeah, so I'm here again to talk about knitting, of course. So just before we start, because there is an elephant in the room, you may see it. Um, just a reminder that we have the Little Big Knits Connections Mal. LBK Connections Mal, hashtag LBK Connections Mal. It's down here. You can use that on Instagram. Excuse the family sounds. They're always there. Um, and they distract me. <laughs> anyway, we have the LBK Connections Mal, and this is being hosted on Instagram with the hashtag, as well as in our Little Big Knits Ravelry group on Ravelry. Um, there's a thread for it there where the discussion and the finished objects and works in progress and, and any pretty pictures you put in there can be seen and shared. And there's lovely conversation and lovely projects. So this is a part, this is a, um, a make along, I should say, that is inclusive of, of any making with any fiber, whether it is woven or a spun fiber. So whether it's sewing or weaving or um, knitting, crochet, needle felting. And the connections part is that you are using materials or patterns that have been given to you, or you are making things to give to others. And it's really about celebrating the connections that we have with one another. And there are some extremely heartwarming stories in there that I've really enjoyed reading. Some amazing, amazing stories and some just simple making for others and making things for ourselves with things that have been given to us. So it's really lovely. Feel free to join in. Um, it's going until the end of the year, so December 31st. And I had planned to do prizes midway through and I'm afraid that just got sidelined. It kind of got sidelined by the five year of anniversary for Little Big Knits. And, and then uh, I ended up taking a bit of a longer break between videos and so it just didn't happen. So what I'm gonna do is do all the prizes at the end of the year in the end. So, and I will do prizes for Instagram as well as Ravelry. And I'll be announcing another sort of more casual knit along a little later, but for now, I think that's all I, oh, I also wanted to say hello and thank you to an anonymous uh, gift giver of gift certificates. Somebody got me a gift certificate um, back in June for my birthday, an anonymous uh, viewer, I'm assuming, but I wanted to thank you very much, whoever you may be. Thank you very kindly for that. All right. Oh, and one other teeny weeny little thing um, that... Um, I had a request, somebody wanted to be able to see the yarn shops in Ottawa. And so I will definitely put something together in the in the future, probably not for the next episode, but over the next little while. And then also there was some interest in seeing my mother's knits uh, from a comment that I made last time in my podcast. So I'll definitely share some of those in the coming episodes as well. Some fun things to share. All right, shall we talk about works in progress? No. We'll start with finished objects and the elephant that is in the room. She's a peachy pinky elephant. All right, so I am wearing the completed Tulip Guernsey by Midori Hirose, who is also the designer of the Ranunculus, which if you've been around, I seem to talk about on a regular basis. This was almost finished the last time my episode, uh, the last time I podcasted. And so I really just had all the finishing touches to do. I think, I think I had finished the 
ribbing and if I hadn't I had almost finished the bottom ribbing. So here it is and I am quite happy with it. There are a couple of details that I wish I had done a little differently but overall love it. Let me talk first about the yarn which is Lang Lino, a worsted weight um, chainette linen that uh, I absolutely adore. This is my third garment using that yarn. It's not an easy yarn to find, but I happened to find it in a store in Montreal, in Verdun, called Crochet Boutique Crochet et Compagnie, where uh, I visited with my friend Kate, um, and I talked about it a couple of episodes ago, I believe. <laughs> And um, I had gotten this, they happened to have a basket on the floor and I was like, what? Cause I thought I'd never be able to find it again. And it's, I have to say, definitely one of my favorite linen yarns. It's a chainette. So it's a very different experience than knitting with spun linen, which can be very straw-like. This has much more give to it. Um, well, I wouldn't say much more give, but it's definitely, I, I feel, less hard on the hands um, and a real pleasure to knit with. It's very much like the Quince & Company Kestrel, which I'll actually be talking about a little later, um, but I would say this is not as heavy. The Kestrel's definitely an Aran weight. This is more of a worsted weight, um, and it feels like a lighter yarn than the Kestrel, but... I'll talk to you about that in a minute, in a few minutes. So that's it about the yarn. It was in this peachy colorway. I don't actually know the number of the colorway. And I made the sweater in it. So I'm just gonna stand up for you to have a look. So here is the sweater. This is one of the main details that I have an issue with. Um, otherwise, I really, really like it. I did something a little different here because I did a little bit of an um, a V line. Could you call it a V line where you go down um, doing some little decreases here and there? That was a technique that was um, used in the Afra for shaping. And I really love my Afra. So I thought I'm going to try that again because it had a lot of ease and I didn't want it to be too, too boxy. Um, because I knew that I was going to make it a tiny bit longer than in the pattern. So I decided to employ that. The other, I think the other little modification I did was that I did a, actually thanks to a viewer, um, I did a two stitch uh, I cord edging along the edge, edges here and on the sleeves, on the neck and the sleeves. And I think it gives a really nice finish and doesn't add too much. I think that in the summer version on the pattern page, she's got a little bit of ribbing here, but an, uh, an unfinished edge here. And I didn't like the way the cast on looked here. Um, and so I wanted something a little neater and I didn't really feel like ribbing would work for me. Um, so I did that and I really, I really like that. So thank you very much for that suggestion. For some reason, I've got a wee bit of a flare happening on this side, but not on the other side. Or maybe it is. No, no, it's, it's the same. Okay, it's all right, though. And um, those are the main modifications that I made. I, I think the sweater relaxed a bit because I'm, I expected this to be more like that and it's quite open and I'm not going to go back and fix this. I'm just going to live with it. I'm still going to wear the sweater, but I do feel like I need to wear it with a tank top, a tank top or um, some sort of um, a sports bra or something underneath to, you know, so that you can see that under there because I, I feel like I had it on with just my bra earlier, which is a skin tone bra. And certainly the view at home was like that it looked fine. Um, especially like you don't, it's not that transparent. Um, a little bit up here, but not in the stocking section really. Um, but, you know, it just didn't look nice here. I don't really love that either. 
Um, so I have to figure figure that out. Maybe I should look for a peach colored tank top. That would be kind of fun. I'm also not super thrilled about wearing a tank top underneath this because this is such a light and lovely fabric that I don't want to make it warmer. And my idea is to wear this when it's a crazy hot day. And maybe on a crazy hot day, I just won't care about that. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, but I really like the fit. It's a, I made it a little longer. Um, I think the original pattern is actually quite cropped and I don't know I kind of felt like I wanted it a little bit longer um, just to have a very relaxed look and hopefully that has paid off um, if I feel like the length is too long that I can shorten very very easily um, but I can't really modify this at this point but still very very pleased with this and you know i'm so glad that kate my friend kate and the woman in the shop convinced me to get this color because this is this kind of a light peachy color is not one that i would have thought to make an entire sweater in but i really like it so here you have it the tulip guernsey by midori hirose knit in lang lino lang yarns lino and um yeah, that's my finished object for today. I'll try and put in a little bit of video of me walking with it so we can we can see what it really looks like. But yeah, very, very pretty top. Very happy with it. So the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the Ellery sweater that I made last year. You may recall if you've been around, I made this sweater and when I wore it in the podcast back then, I was a little concerned about the neckline because the neckline had ended up quite loose. And afterwards, I realized I'm never going to wear this thing with that neckline. The sweater is quite heavy. And you'll see a thread there because I redid the neckline, which is what I'm going to talk to you about. But this yarn is a, an Aran weight chain at linen like this one. Um, but it's a little heavier, so it's a little bit, it's a little thicker, so it's a little heavier. Um, and I think the fact that this sweater has all this slip stitching here, you actually end up, can I say that you end up with, with more fabric? The sweater is really quite heavy. Um, and so I thought if I'm going to wear this sweater, I definitely need to make a smaller neckline. Or it's just never going to happen and I really really wanted to work with this yarn I'm certainly happy to have worked with this yarn I would work with it again although I think my preference is for the Langlino to be honest um, just because it's a little bit lighter um, but this yarn is quite heavy and this like just holding the sweater feels heavy so I diminished the neckline by about 20 stitches Put it on it was still too big so i undid it again and diminished it by 40 stitches in total and now it's quite lovely this pattern is knit from the top down so undoing the sweater from the bottom where you end it would be very easy but here i literally had to cut one stitch and unravel and it's a pretty arduous task i have to say when you are unraveling backwards um, you have to cut the stitch and then pull, but you're, it's, it, it took a long time, that's all I can say. But I finally had the, the energy one evening to do it, and so I did it, and then I had to do the neckline. I picked up, picked up all the stitches, and as I said, diminished by 20, it didn't work. Um, pulled back and then diminished by 40. So I'm going to try this on so you can have a look and see what it looks like at this point. I certainly like it a lot more. I'm certainly more convinced that I'm more likely to wear it. However, I'm not completely convinced that I will wear it. Um, like this one, I know I'm going to wear it. It's just such a pretty sweater. It's so pretty. <laughs> anyway, and, and this is lovely too, but the weight of it bothers me a little bit. Um, because I think that it's going to be, in terms of the kind of weather that we have here, we go from hot to cold. This might have a very, very short window when I could wear it, 
because it's going to be too warm when it's hot and probably not warm enough when it starts cooling down. So I'm not totally convinced, but I'm certainly more convinced than I was. So, ta-da! Here you have the new Ellery with a much smaller neck, way more comfortable to wear, much more flattering. I do think I probably could have made one size smaller. I think that that would have had an impact as well. But just so you can have a look, it's a very, very, very flowy kind of sweater. And it's got these longish sleeves, but I could see myself doing this. It's very sweatshirt-like. And I have to say that it's definitely, like at this point, it's really comfortable. I just feel like it's on, it's comfortable. And it's a beautiful color, absolutely love it. it turned into beige when I was walking around. And so yeah, so I'm gonna give it a try. And let's see how it gets worn over the next month, in the month of September when we've still got sort of a mix of summer and fall weather. I'm kind of curious to see. Um, and if I find that I'm wearing it, great. And I thought, if I'm not, I'm gonna pull this apart and turn it into something else. Um, I even thought a summer ranunculus would be great. Just perhaps a summer version that would be a little bit lighter with the lace. Um, it might work, it might work better. Um, there would be yarn left over and perhaps it could become a little tank top for somebody else or I don't know. But I do think that at this point, I definitely have more of a chance of actually wearing this thing. So for now, it's a keeper. Um, and yeah. Meanwhile, next week, I'm going to be moving my son uh, back to Montreal with a few items uh, for his apartment because he's moving into an apartment this year. And if I have the time, I'm not sure I will, uh, I will be going to perhaps to Verdun to see if they have any more of the Lang Lino um, from the other sweater, the Tulip Guernsey. If they have any left, I might buy more of it just because I really, really like it and it's such a difficult find. Um, so yeah, uh, but this one is with the Quince & Company Kestrel and uh, also a very nice, a very nice yarn, just a little bit heavier um, than the other one. So, so there you go. It's the Ellery Redo. The Ellery is a pattern by Elizabeth Doherty, and it's a lovely pattern. I enjoyed making it. Um, has this beautiful slip stitch detail. I feel like some other designers have copied this, but I think that she was the first one to come out with this. Um, but other ones have done something similar at this point. And she has also come out with a version that has this slip stitch throughout as well. So, yeah, there you go. That was uh, sort of a refinished object. <laughs> ah, back into this sweater now, uh, just because it is a warm day and I don't want to overheat. I have one last finished object. I was actually contacted by my local yarn and fabric shop. It's actually, originally it was a fabric shop called Fabrications. Um, they are very close to me, about a kilometer away. And I know a couple of the women who work in there, they've worked in other places and we've known each other for a few years. And I was contacted and asked if I would knit a sample for their shop. And they had received a new yarn um, by a by a dyer in Montreal, around Montreal, um, and the yarn is called The Engineer. And um, they have a couple of different bases. They have a 100% superwash, and then they have a superwash and 15% uh, Donegal tweed nips, which is what I used. And um, so this is the, uh, it's called the engineer and the base that I used was the tweet. And they asked if I would need a sample of my Westboro hat design. Uh, if you've been around, you know that I designed a hat called the Westboro hat. And um, gosh, two years ago now, I think. And uh, they wanted a sample for the store. So they gave me, this is the leftovers, this wonderful green, um, tweed yarn to use for the hat. Now the hat was designed actually with a sport weight yarn um, and this is a fingering. 
but I think I have made it work. I said I would probably add one uh, repeat of the baubles to lengthen the hat a tiny bit more, but here is the hat. There you can see the beautiful tweed yarn with the little baubles as well. This is a simple hat design. I originally knit it in a sports weight and then I also did it in a fingering and mohair combination. So this one I knit with the same needle sizes uh, for the rim and uh, or for the ribbing as well as the main body of the hat, but I made it a little bit longer uh, so that it would have the slouch. So I just finished this sample. I will probably be delivering it to the store today or tomorrow uh, for them to to have it as their sample so that they can they can show off the beautiful yarn from this new dyer from Montreal. So yeah, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing it in the shop. So that's my third finished, well, is it the second? Second real finished object. And then um, there's the refinished object. So there you go. So I had to replace the baubles a little bit because the decreases include one set of baubles and I just had to finagle a little bit because I, I added an extra repeat um, of where the baubles, I added half a repeat, I should say. I added one extra set of baubles so I lengthened the hat by about an inch, um, which it would have basically had had it been knit with a heavier yarn. So that is my other work in progress, or my other finished object. I really enjoyed knitting this hat. Hats are so wonderful to make. Um, so I think I'm going to make another one uh, for somebody this fall. I had hoped to make one a couple of years ago for a friend and it didn't happen. Um, and so I'll probably make one for her, but yeah. So there you go from Fabrications. They do have an online shop, so feel free to check it out if you're interested in looking. This dyer actually has beautiful colorways. Um, so I'm, I'm contemplating getting myself a little bit of this yarn as well. And that is it for finished objects. So let's move on to works in progress. So works in progress. I'm going to start with, um, I've got, two works in progress that I've really been working on. You may remember last time, there were a lot of socks flying around. Those have all been put aside for a while, uh, for now, just because I have signed up for a test knit. Uh, Annina Yuti, who is also the host of the Anni Yuti Knits podcast, um, has a new sock design out. And, well, not out, out for testing. I should say. I think she's hoping to release it by the end of September. And it was such a beautiful pattern that I applied to uh, test it. And I've been working on that. So an Annina, by the way, also, which is um, one of my acquisitions, but I'll just share it now. She released a sweater pattern a couple of weeks ago called the Bayou. And I'll put it up here for you to have a look and see. It's a beautiful, beautiful sweater. A very sort of simple raglan top-down construction that has a beautiful um, detail in the um, ribbing of the arm as well as the body. Just a lovely sweater. And I actually thought about getting some of this yarn to knit it, some of the engineer yarn. Um, so we'll see, uh, but it's a beautiful sweater. And she is also a designer of um, socks and uh, she has got a pattern out to be tested and I am testing it. And I finished the first sock. There is a little marker here and that little marker will also figure in my next work in progress because I dropped a stitch, which I only realized when I was up here needing to get ready for the ribbing and I was short a stitch and I was like, what is going on? And then I finally realized that I had dropped a stitch and I just hadn't noticed. I had naturally kind of adjusted for it without really noticing. So I'm going to just, I decided that I'm just going to put it in and we'll just pretend that didn't happen. But this is such a beautiful pattern. It's going to be called the Caramel Fox Socks. And I'm just going to turn this around so that you can see the beautiful detail that goes up the foot 
it's just gorgeous 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 detail and it's got a very little tiny cable detail that goes up the side of the leg as well and goes I can't believe I did that. Oh, Anina, I'm a really bad tester. I can't believe I did that. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. So <laughs> there's this cable detail that is supposed to go right up the top of the cable, uh, right into the ribbing. And uh, I got so into the ribbing that I just totally forgot the cable. So I'm going to have to pull that back and do it because I really like that detail. And it's just, it's a beautiful design. Beautiful design, and Selma's not a very good tester. How about that? She drops stitches, she forgets details. She doesn't eat, read instructions properly sometimes. Um, but really, really beautiful. So this will be coming out in September. And late September, I knit this sock out of gorgeous yarn, um, up, which is housed in this bag by Jenna Rose. Jenna Rose is a local screen printer and bag maker. She makes uh, different kinds of bags for knitters and non-knitters and her work is just stunning. And I actually decided to match my project to my bag, even though the bag is a little bigger than I needed for a sock pattern. But I used yarn by Alley Cat Yarns, by Melissa of Alley Cat Yarns. And this was her smooth sock base, which is 85 superwash merino and 15% nylon really lovely lovely soft wool um this is the copper penny colorway very very beautiful um and really enjoyed working with it it was a delight to work with so yeah so pattern by Anina Yuti coming out at the end of September and I'll have a second pair a second sock at that point and hopefully you know Selma will get it right for the second sock ribbing and the yarn by Alley Cat Yarns, who's a local uh, dyer, and who I had a chance to say hello to at the Twist Fiber Festival, which I'll tell you about a little later. So there you go. Um, that is a one work in progress, a really lovely, lovely sock to knit, I have to say. Uh, really fun details on it, and well thought out, well explained. So yeah, excited that that will be coming out. The next thing that I have been working on and have not finished, I had hoped to finish, but I have not, is my Giselle shawl. So my Giselle shawl, this is uh, the pattern by Cami Jo Knits, um, who is also the dyer of one of the yarns on this pattern. So I had finished the first part of the shawl, hello, which was using yarn by Bente of Arctic Crafts uh, yarns and this beautiful single ply uh, yarn in Moody Mauve. And the first part of the shawl is garter goodness, uh, very simple and mindless. The second, and you're doing, you start with a little tiny cast on and you're increasing and on the second part of the shawl, you use mohair and you are decreasing. And <laughs> I realized that I think I podcasted about here and I realized uh, this week that I had dropped a stitch um, back then. So I decided I am not ripping all of this back. I'm, it's just going to be what it's going to be, but I think that the edging looks slightly different as a result from it probably would in the pattern. But um, I'm really enjoying this mohair lace. It's just so, so pretty. And I would say that I'm about a third of the way down. I still have quite a bit to do, but you have less and less stitches as you go down. So um, it's gonna get faster and faster. I have this much left from the first skein of mohair, and this is by Cami Jonitz. I ordered it from her um, for the shawl, which is her design, and this was the I, what was it called? Was it the Pink Lemonade? I think it was called Pink Lemonade. Um, if it's not, it'll have a different name down here. But just such a stunning, 
such a stunning color uh, that it kind of inspired my nail color this time, although it's a little bit more brownie. But yeah, it was so, so pretty. So I have been knitting on this. Um, I had I, I knit the hat and I needed to make sure that I finished the sock by a certain date. So I gave those priority. But in the last week, I've been working on this quite a lot and definitely hope to have this finished for, you know, for this late September at the very latest so that I can really enjoy wearing it. Beautiful, beautiful design, Camila. Really, really like it a lot. And actually, when I was at the Twist Fiber Festival, um, the dyer behind Emilia, Emilia y Filomen yarns was wearing a version of this in her yarns. So that was very cool. She had used a kind of a brown and a, a light caramel color for the mohair and a, and a sort of a, a darker caramel brown for this. Um, it was really beautiful. And, and I saw her and I said, hey, you're wearing the Giselle shawl. <laughs> I'm working on that right now. So yeah, really lovely. So that's my other whip um, that I'm really enjoying working on and hope to finish in the next couple of weeks um, and show you the next time. So if I'm lucky next <laughs> and actually get the sock and the shawl finished uh, in the next couple of weeks, the next podcast, I'll have those two as finished objects. So the other thing that I have been working on is the Fairy Bouquet by, well, I can't say that I have been working on it. I picked it up last night because I was like, okay, I, I feel like I need to start moving forward with my fall knits. The nip in the air just instantly made me feel that. But I was really kind of, I have to say, for a little while going, what am I going to work on? What am I going to work on? What am I going to work on? And I just couldn't seem to like figure it out. Finally last night I thought, okay, I know that I'm going to have to sort of relearn the butterfly stitch on this uh, sleeve, which is not very difficult, but it still requires techniques. Uh, I couldn't remember how to do the, the stitches here. Um, and so I decided to pick this up last night and I literally knit about an inch of the arm, um, but I'm hoping to have this finished as well very soon because this is so darn pretty. It's so, so pretty um, that I'm really looking forward to having this to wear uh, this fall and winter. I think it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. So I am hoping to go to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival uh, the very first weekend of November. I mean, not only same. very first weekend of October. I can't say I'm hoping to go. I am going. I'm going to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival with a couple of other friends uh, for the first weekend of October. And I could perhaps see myself wearing this. It's really going to depend on the weather. It could be warm and I could be wearing my Ellery, for example. But um, I would like to have this finished. And I had hoped to finish this for the fall. And it's so beautiful. This is the Fairy Bouquet, if you haven't been around for a while, the Fairy Bouquet sweater by Joanna Eng. And I used um, some fingering weight yarn by Fine Fish Yarns. She is no longer dyeing yarn, but this was her fingering weight mohair. I mean, uh, merino, I'm all over the place today. Uh, actually, it was a sock yarn, 75% merino and 25% nylon, just a very light, soft yarn. And I have some natural colored mohair that I got from Acme Fibers. That is a um, shop that sells undyed yarns for dyers as well as dyes. Um, I also got my Chow Gu uh, interchangeable set from, from, from them a while back. So that's, I just, I've got a bunch of their undyed mohair, thinking that it's used, it's great when I need a natural colored or a, a white like mohair, but if I wanna dye some at some point, then I've got it there. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm using for this sweater, which is being housed in this bag by Amelia of uh, Mila's Sweet Makes. 
Um, she's got a shop where she makes bags, although it's kind of outgrowing this bag, so I might have to move it um, at some point. Um, yeah, so anyway, that I just picked it up last night and really hoping to also work on that. So let's see what I finish for the next episode. It's going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, so those are my active works in progress. Um, also swatched a tiny bit for with this beautiful green yarn. Oh my gosh. Really, really like that. This is the uh, Stolen Stitches Nua that my, my friend Kate, who uh, of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft, when she visited, she brought me this a sweater quantity of this beautiful yarn in this color called Frog on the Wall. And I am swatching with this yarn because I am thinking of making the Peary Leaves by Donna Smith with this. It's a simple drop shoulder sweater with kind of a diamond lace up the front. I don't think it has anything on the back. I haven't looked that closely. But although I've used this yarn, I used this yarn for my Kevat uh, top in the spring that I made in blue with this yarn. Um, the, the gauge for this particular sweater is quite different. So I went up a needle size to 4.5 millimeter needles and I really like it. So I think I'm going to use 4.5 millimeter needles. My gauge is still slightly off. Um, so I have to modify which size I will wear, but I am hoping to cast that on this fall. It's one of my goals for this fall. Don't think I'll be casting it on right away because... Well, I've got plenty to work on. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention to you is uh, this great bag that I got. Did I get this for myself for Christmas? It's by Lolu Bees, who is a Quebec bag maker. She was also at Twist, actually. Um, made this great bag. And I have in here um, some Nutiden yarn that I have been swatching here and there over the last fall. This is the Sinne colorway, Sinne, Sinne, Sinne colorway um, that I got last year and absolutely love it and have been swatching. Actually, I've got various swatches. I've been swatching it with this mohair by Shibui. It's the Silk Cloud, and this was a Julie Hoover colorway, uh, which do they have a name called Vintage Rose. And together they create a very lovely combination. They're very close in color. There's just a little bit more depth to this one. This is looking more orange on screen than I would say it looks like. It's a bit more pinky in real life. Um, and I am hoping to cast on the Koyame sweater, also by Joanna Ang. My fall will be a Joanna Ang um, fall. However, I do not have any pictures of the pattern printed, but it is a top-down kind of saddle shoulder. I'll put a picture of it here. However, I'm planning on making it a short sleeve sweater to be more like a vest. And I actually, that reminds me that I had somebody ask me, so is a vest just a short sleeve sweater? And I would say it can be. Sometimes a vest is a no sleeve sweater, um, or it's just being, you know, it's shortened here. Sometimes it can have a drop shoulder. And sometimes I just convert sweaters into vests by not making long sleeves. And um, I think that it just it, it can be a really lovely thing to wear over a blouse in the winter and well if you've been around you know i like vests a lot and they're just great layering pieces so this is another cast on that i'm hoping to do this fall but not only am i hoping to do this this fall it's also going to be part of a new knit along um, i'm part of a, a group a chat group with some other podcasters and we were talking about unspun yarns one day and I sort of said, hey, should we have a knit along with some of our unspun yarns? Um, those of us that feel like feel like trying. So a group of us are going to be uh, starting a knit along with unspun yarn. It doesn't have to be knitted in. It could be Plotulopi. It could be um, any other unspun that you, I know Briggs and Littles has one. Uh, there's also Manchilopi in Spain. 
Um, there are different unspun yarns here and there, and um, you can combine it with something else like a mohair, which is what I'm going to do for this particular project. But we are starting a very informal knit along and we're calling it the Unspun Heroes, Cal. And if you want to join, uh, if you uh, happen to hear other podcasters talk about it as well, feel free to join in. I think it'll probably be something mostly hosted on Instagram. We haven't really talked about the details, but it's starting September 1st. We're going to be casting on Whip's Welcome to as well, by the way. Um, but I'll probably be casting on sometime soon uh, thereafter, casting on the Koyami. I'm still doing a little bit of swatching because I swatched such a long time ago that I don't actually remember anymore. <laughs> I didn't take notes. And so I'm having to swatch some more. So whips are welcome. It's going to go from September 1st until the end of January. So January 31st, um, you can knit any sort of item with unspun yarn and it can include other yarns as well so if you're double stranding with something else no problem um just an informal cal but uh kind of a fun time as we go into fall to use up some of the unspun yarns i got this new to din uh, a year ago and i haven't used it yet so i thought this would be a great motivation i have wanted to cast this koyami on for a long time <laughs> And um, I finally will with this yarn. So feel free to join if you are inclined uh, to uh, try out some uh, unspun yarn or to knit more with some unspun yarn. You may be an addict and feel free to use the hashtag unspun heroes cal and join us in the cal and you might see some other familiar faces as well. Um, so yeah, so that's starting September 1st. And so this will be cast on the next time I podcast, uh, but probably not finished unless I just get so excited. I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous about working with this unspun yarn. Um, I think I feel like it's one of those things that can be a bit of a uh, love hate type of thing. So I'm hoping that I'll love it. Certainly the swatching has been easier than I expected it to be. Um, but I do feel like you, it's not the kind of project that you just whip out uh, in, you know, at the doctor's office because I feel like you have to handle the yarn a certain way and you have to be a bit delicate with it. So it's kind of one of those things that I'll probably knit on in the evening. The Koyame, as you saw in the picture, is actually a bit of a, it's a top down sweater with a, a saddle shoulder kind of feature that goes into the sleeves. I'll be stopping here. So it'll just be here. Um, and it's got a very loose gauge, so I'm trying to get as close to that gauge as possible, just trying to understand how large a needle I can go with. I think it uses a six millimeter needle in the pattern. I suspect I can use a six millimeter needle quite easily, so I'm just doing some more swatching. And I've never done, have I? That's not completely true. I think one of the uh, Elizabeth Doherty patterns, the Calyx, I think that was a bit of a saddle shoulder style um, pattern. So this will be my second time making a, a sweater like that. But I've been a little tentative about starting this one, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So yeah, so join in the Cal if you're interested and, uh, and it'll be hosted over on Instagram with that hashtag. So that is it as far as knitting. I feel that's enough as far as knitting goes. I feel like I didn't have anything to show and then I'm like, oof, there's a lot going on here. So just very quickly, I'll show you some of the, the things that I got at Twist Fiber Festival, which is a fiber festival uh, hosted in uh, saint andre Avelin in Quebec. Uh, it's about an hour from Ottawa, an hour and maybe an hour and 15 minutes from Ottawa. And I went and uh, joined Rose of Akara Yarns in her booth on the Saturday. And uh, it was a lovely festival, I have to say. Um, it's always a lovely festival. They hadn't had it for a couple of years, so it was very nice to have it back. I would say that it was slightly quieter than usual. Um, I think everybody's speculating as to why it was so. 
but I have to say that it made it lovely to walk around and um, Montreal Knit City I think had probably also had had huge attendance and I, I did wonder if perhaps some people with the current situation, inflation perhaps have decided, okay, I've been to one festival, I'm not going to go to both, or people are traveling more this summer because things are opening up. I'm not quite sure why, but it certainly was a little quieter, but no less wonderful because there are so many beautiful makers that are making things. And had a lovely day uh, with, with Rose in her booth, and uh, it was just very, very nice. I did have some time to walk around and see all the other makers. It takes place in an arena, but and so there are lots of vendors in the arena, and then they also have an adjacent room. Um, so there's a lot to see, and it's, it's just a really, really lovely festival with a lot of local makers. Um, I would say a nice combination, too, between... Um, the more sort of super wash type yarns and more natural fibers and there were some potters there's some other types of makers there so i had zero intention of bringing home yarn uh mm -mm -mm. you'll see momentarily that um i didn't completely keep that promise but i did come home with a few other little things that i was really happy to come home with and i want to show you those as well. Not that I wasn't happy to come home with the yarn. I just right now I feel like I'm trying to be as careful as possible about about bringing yarn home because I just really want to use up the yarns that I have, which are plentiful. But there's one person whose work you have seen before on the podcast, and this is uh, Catherine Pelletier uh, Illustration. I think is is her her name. I'll put her down here. Uh, you will see I came home from Knit City Montreal with cards by her. I pretty much always buy something by her because I just absolutely love her work. And this time I decided to get a poster. It's so beautiful. Such a stunning illustration. And I am hoping to finally create a little bit of a crafting corner for myself. And so I'm hoping to put this in a frame and put it in my crafting corner. So that was one thing. You can find her work online. She's also on Instagram. Um, and her work is just so beautiful. Her drawings are just whimsical and lovely. In terms of yarn, I had to get yarn from, from Rose from Akara Yarns. You saw last episode, if you were here, my finished lapis sweater by Yamagara. And I had knit that sweater in her yarn. The black yarn was Ella Ray, but all the, most of the sweater was using Akara yarns in her silk linen base. It's a fingering, she has three weights actually. She's got fingering, sport, and DK in the silk uh, linen yarn, but I had used the fingering for that and just such beautiful yarn. And I remembered that she had a kind of a lavender color that was still in my mind. And when I was with her in the booth, I was like, yeah, that's it. That's coming home with me because it's just so darn beautiful. So I brought home two skeins of this absolute beautiful yarn, her silk linen. And this is the uh, Puto Bumbong colorway in this beautiful beautiful lilac kind of colorway that has some little um sort of beigey brown black speckles here and there and i really enjoyed this yarn with a lace i'm sorry with a stocking net stitch especially i just it just has such a beautiful drape such a beautiful feel that i decided to get to to just make a little tea for next summer Probably something like the Edie by Isabel Kramer, or just a very simple, maybe even round neck tee like this. Just an easy peasy wear. Um, so I got two of these. Just so you know, Rose has since, this is her original label. She has since uh, got a new design and it's pretty stunning uh, in black and rose gold. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up, but this is her, her older label. So if you see some different labels, it's still Rose's Glorious Yarn. So yeah, so this is the yarn that I brought home for myself from, 
from the festival. It's just so beautiful. I think it would make a stunning, stunning shawl as well. I've kind of contemplated, did I want to make a shawl with this? I think I want to make a top, but I think it's got such stunning drape, this yarn, that it would be beautiful for a shawl as well. There were a couple of vendors from the States, actually, this time. Um, uh, Prado de Lana was there, as well as A Wing and a Prayer. A Wing and a Prayer farm is in Vermont, and they're usually at um, Rhinebeck, and they have beautiful yarn. But I was being very, very restrained, or as restrained as I could be. Um, and However, they had a couple of, uh, in the uh, Wing and a Prayer farm, they had Taproot Magazine, which is a magazine that I really enjoy, but it's not very easy to find in Canada, and the shipping is usually quite expensive. Um, and it's not a cheap magazine. This is a beautiful, beautiful um, magazine that is really for makers of different kinds. It's it's not it's not only knitting, although there are, uh, there's a lovely uh, sock pattern in here. But it is a magazine that is put together that has no um, no advertising whatsoever, and I believe it's a women run. Uh, organization that puts it together. And so when I saw this, I wanted to grab a copy of this um, magazine. And in this particular edition, there is a uh, an article by, I believe at least one of the owners of, um, of A Wing and a Prayer. Uh, her name is Tamara White. And there is an article um, about, about sheep. I haven't read it yet. Um, and there are just so many lovely, lovely things in here. There's some cooking, there is some gardening, there is some stories. This is the sock pattern. And a friend saw these and she said, those are very nice. And I thought, well, you know what? I've never made color work socks and I've always wanted to. Um, I have some lovely patterns, um, but if she really liked these, I might, I might give them a go, we'll see. We'll see when it could work out. But it's, it's just really lovely. So very inspiring, lovely magazine. Actually, there was these this one page with questions here for you to think about. And some of them are really interesting. Imagine you are guarding a door. What would be behind it? Um, very interesting. What was your last dessert? Now turn that into a cocktail. <laughs> so yeah, so I got that as well as some uh, balm. I don't know if you've ever noticed, you may have noticed, but pretty much every time I go to a festival, I come home with hand balm. <laughs> it just seems to, I just, I have creams all over the place. I, my hands really need uh, cream a lot. And so I got some of this, I've used it already. It's a lovely, very herbal smelling um, salve. And so those are the two things I got from A Wing and a Prayer. And the last thing that I got was from Twill and Print. I got some of their wool wash. And being half Finnish, I had to get the one that's called sauna or sauna, as they would say in Finnish. It's got quite a bit of lanolin in it, which is why it's white, and it'll separate. So you have to mix it to use it uh, before using it. And this has a lovely, slightly cedar-like smell to it, a bit of lavender um, and eucalyptus, and it's just really lovely. So um, that's something else that I really enjoy are some natural wool washes. So I'll give it a try and see how it works out. So that's what I got from the Twist Fiber Festival. It was lovely, and um, I'm look for looking forward to going again next year. In terms of other things to mention, um, as I mentioned, we have family here. We were just at a cottage for a week. Um, it's been it's been busy. There's been a lot going on, and the house is quiet, which was why I podcasted because they went shopping today. You have heard some other family noises around. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Um, and as I said, I'll be going to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival at the beginning of October. There's also the Van Cleek Hill Fiber Frolic, which happens on the Saturday of September 24th, I believe. Um, so that is another lovely uh, woolly event that is coming up. 
And um, yeah, summer is kind of winding down. School will be starting. I am hoping to go to one more cottage with a friend. Um, you saw footage in the last podcast at the beginning of um, that sort of that cottage um, and the, the environment around it. And that's the cottage that we're hoping to go back to. And um, yeah, so I think September is going to be a little bit busy, but um, all good stuff. So yeah, and I started listening to uh, a rendition of Jane Austen's Persuasion, read by Juliet Stevenson. It was very beautifully read, but about partway through, I thought I am just not in the mood to listen to this. <laughs> I love Jane Austen, but I'm not in the mood to listen to this. So I stopped listening to that and uh, listened to a wonderful, well, wonderful, it was pretty good, uh, a new uh, mystery novel by Dervla McTiernan, whose books I have really enjoyed. She has written a book that just came out, a new book called The Murder Rule. And most of her books, she's Irish, and they all have taken place in Ireland. This one took place in the States, in Virginia, I believe. Um, and it was it was it was a great listen exactly what i needed i could not stop listening to it um some things were a little bit implausible in it but i still really enjoyed it and it was just the perfect summer listen and what i needed um yeah it somehow really worked and i and i still really enjoy her her writing um and enjoy her her storytelling i went to see the movie version of uh where the crawdads sing uh, which I actually enjoyed. Um, I thought it was a fairly good rendition of the book. Um, with Daisy Jones, what's her last name? Daisy Jones, Daisy Jones, something or other. Can't remember, she's got two last names. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, actually. I thought it was really good. I think that's about it. <laughs> it's been a busy, busy summer, I have to say. It almost felt like kind of pre, pre-COVID. And one thing that's been sort of interesting is that I feel like I've gotten used to a much slower pace of life. So this summer has felt very, very busy. Uh, there's been a lot going on. Um, it's been a bit of a crazy time within our family as well. So I am kind of, although I've enjoyed all the swims and I've enjoyed the gardening and the lovely warm weather and so forth, I'm kind of hoping for a quieter fall and winter. We'll see. Um, let's see if that happens. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I haven't gotten myself particularly well organized for Podcast Corner this time. So I'll just mention one ep podcast that uh, I know that I wanted to mention today, and then I'll come back with a couple more next time. But uh, is the podcast that I wanted to mention is a relatively new podcast. I think she just uh, released episode number four. And this is a podcast called Knit Sip Happy with Nancy Wheeler. Nancy is a lovely uh, knitting friend from Moncton, New Brunswick, uh, who is also a designer. So you've heard her name before, Nancy Wheeler, because um, I had test knit some socks for her. Uh, when was that? Perhaps in the spring time or in the late winter. And uh, Nancy's continuing to design socks. So if you are a lover of sock designers, you should check Nancy Wheeler's patterns out. But she's also got a podcast called Knit Sip Happy. And I wanted to mention that last time and it somehow didn't happen. So I wanted to make sure that I mention it this time. And I think that that is about it for now, my friends. I think I have gone through everything. Have I mentioned absolutely everything? Hopefully I have. So I hope you have enjoyed the late summer knits and the fall planning that has happened in this episode. And I'll leave you with some footage from some of the cottaging and outings from recently. And we'll see you next time. Take care.
the stars have come in close just to see you, I suppose. And they're <laughs> gleaming. You must be dreaming. And the sun has said goodbye with a twinkle in his eye. He's left the ocean with sweet emotion. We go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly. And the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town. And he's so lonely I love you only I love you All the birds have taken flight It's their favorite time of night When they can hear you From somewhere near you And the palm trees try to bend To be closer to their friends They're made of magic Reach out and grab we go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slow.